Hey Risers, it's Tina here and I just want to tell you a little fun fact and jump on. Now a lot of the things that may surprise people is that when we get into a studio and when we sing live, a lot of people are very um, quick to mention auto-tune or pitch correction in a lot of live and studio performances. Now, here's the thing, and this is just something that has been done for a very, very long time, is these days, everything you hear on the radio is pitch corrected. Does that mean that the artist can't sing? Of course not, no. But what it is is that because it's on radio, because I guess things are a little bit more sensitive in recording, most of the time when you're watching a TV show that has singing, you listen to a radio, you're listening even to a live performance at a concert, there is always certain effects and even slight pitch corrections and even slight auto-tune, depending if the artist strictly requests it or not, in most of those performances. And it's just quite simple. A lot of the time, uh, microphones uh, in those settings are a lot more sensitive, uh, particularly the TV in the studio. Uh, and we need to put those effects so that we can get the most authentic and smooth take. So if anyone's ever seen a live show of a talent show and they've gone to watch it, it sounds amazing. And then you watch the rerun later and you watch it on TV and you go, I don't remember that person sounding like that in that way because it goes through all these effects. And I just want to address this because it's not a bad thing. It's almost like an industry standard. A lot of the tracks that you hear have a pitch correction or some filter that goes through it, pitch filter or auto correction that goes through it to smooth out the vocals. Um, this is probably something I can do in a, a voice breakdown is actually maybe sing something in the studio for you, put nothing on it and just hear how sensitive it is like even any little inflection, any little um, slight, and I mean slight off pitch notes will be heard and they'll be accentuated. And then maybe put a pitch correction on top and just see what it does. Um, let me know down below if this is something you're curious to know more about. Um, I know that prior, when I was younger, prior to entering kind of that industry, I was actually surprised when I went to work with uh, an international music producer for the first time. This was years ago. And he said to me, he goes, oh, I've got to pitch correct your voice. And I was like, oh, I, I don't want it pitch corrected. Like, I don't want any of that stuff on it. And he turned around and he said to me, he goes, it's industry standard, Tina. Our ears are so used to hearing pitch perfect that putting this on radio will actually almost throw people off. And I was like, but I didn't understand. I was like, but I'm singing I'm not singing bad, I'm, I'm singing on key, like, I don't understand. Uh, but it actually just ends up being the industry standard. If you listen to a lot of um, past albums, like even back to like Adele's first album, uh, it was a lot more raw and I personally love that. If you go back to even like Etta James days and stuff, I love that rawness. I love hearing everything, but it's changed and the industry's changed. So I just kind of wanted to shed some light on the behind the scenes of like what's real, what's not. It doesn't mean and doesn't impact the person's talent. A singer can be fantastic, pitch perfect. Well, it's very hard to be pitch perfect. Very few percentage of people by rights are pitch perfect, but um, you can be very close to it, but you'll always have little inflections and little things that are slightly out when you're singing live and slightly out when you're singing a phrase in a studio, you can do another take, or if it's a pressured time deadline situation and it's your last chance, they'll go back and they'll just correct that little piece. So that's a bit of information uh, for you on the backgrounds of, I guess, the music industry and pitch correction and auto-tune. There are different levels, by the way, of that. You can put it to 100 and you'll sound like T-Pain. Um, you can put it on a little bit and it'll just smooth things over or perhaps even add like a little effect. So. I want to leave you with that information. I thought it was a fun little point to talk about. If you have any questions or concerns, or even want to shed some light further, maybe you are an um, audio engineer or, or have worked in the industry and you want to put some two cents down below, let me know. Maybe it's different in other countries as well. Maybe it's not all the same. Maybe it's not the standard worldwide. I don't know. So I'd, 
love to hear your thoughts. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment down below, let me know your thoughts on it, and I hope to see you soon. Bye.